Hey everyone, and welcome to another Yogi Misfit Sessions. My name is Danny Pomploon, and I'm your host. Today I'm coming at you with episode three of our Fierce Calm collaboration. They're an amazing, 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 (laughs) how many times can I say that? Amazing, amazing, amazing organization based out of the UK. Um, And we have partnered up now to tell these amazing stories about yoga and how it's changed people's lives and really given um, people an opportunity to, uh, to, yeah, to live again through yoga or how it's saved their lives through yoga. On today's episode, I have Yoga Girl London, or Hannah Barrett, on the show, and she talks about how yoga not only saved her, but also motherhood saved her, and how it's empowered her to be back in her body, and how she's inspired others to do the same. It's a really, really great episode. I had a really good time chatting it up with her. Of course, if you guys enjoy the show, please remember to leave a review on iTunes. I say it all the time. But it really does help the show out a lot. It really gets people to uh, know more about it. It moves us up in iTunes and all that fun stuff. So it only takes about a minute. And just think about the uh, the yummy goodness that you're doing for the yoga community by helping us out. Big shout out to our friends over at SF Yoga Magazine for their continued support. Without further ado, here comes episode Fiercecom 3. So right before I started recording, Hannah, I was telling you that I I put on this very sexy, nasally voice for you. (laughs) (laughs) I love it. I really love it. (laughs) We haven't met yet. I can't wait till we do. Yeah, no, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. Definitely. So I get to hang out with you in your backyard, well, across the pond, as they say, <laughs> um, in London in June, and we're going to be uh, we're going to be teaching together, and and hopefully I'll I'll be able to get to spend some time with you, hanging out and and seeing your town. I've never been to London in the summer; I've only gone in the winter. Oh God! Well, hopefully you have another summer like last summer, and you'll yeah, it's amazing when the, well, the sun's shining. London's yeah, absolutely awesome. So you are, I mean, you're officially, you're the, you're the, you're yoga girl, London. Yeah. I'm yoga girl, London. <laughs> as opposed to being, as opposed to being any random yoga girl, you're yoga girl, London. <laughs> yes. London, London, London. Uh, Hannah, tell me your story. How did you, um, how did your, how did your yoga journey come about for you? So I, um, kind of, I kind of always liked yoga, went to the odd class here and there, but I was a bit of a gym bunny. And then, um, I fell pregnant with my son and I just really really got into it and that's when I kind of started a daily practice and started a self-practice um and I just you know it's the it's the the usual story like you go to (laughs) make these crazy bendy shapes and get strong and stuff and then you just get really addicted to just actually kind of the feeling and the peace and I used to be so anxious I used to have this um crazy job in the city, uh, really long hours working projects. And although I loved it, I got super, super stressed. And um, it just, it helped that. And in terms of motherhood, like the birth, the, uh, you know, after just getting me through, like my, my yoga was just, it just helped me. It was there. It was like getting on my mat, moving, breathing was just helped me find kind of the inner strength I needed. It was a release. Um, and I'm sure we're going to talk about it later when I have my second child, Emily. Um, she, it was a kind of really traumatic experience of birth and she was really sick. And actually it was a, it really helped me in the first kind of like, month or so when when we didn't know what was going on and actually you know just those those deep breaths and and trying to stay mindful and see the positive and you know all the the bits of yoga that oh god just yeah kind of change your life it changed your life I'm sure you agree I know you agree um oh but, my god yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah and everyone, I mean... people that don't know yoga are like oh my god it's so corny like but it's, it's so true. That's why I say. I think people, forget. people, you know, people forget, like, we, I mean, we all come into yoga in many different ways, but you know, I, I, I find that in my community, there's a lot of people that like yoga was either like a last resort or it was just like this yeah. magical thing that really helped impact or change them or, you know, made some, a really dramatic effect in their life. You know, as it did for me, yoga gave me a second life. It gave me a second opportunity to live and, you know, to, to, to be here, like I, to, to do what I'm doing today. Yoga is giving me this platform to do what I'm doing today, which is super cool. 
it is amazing that you can basically so basically I ended up quitting my job in finance and now my job is my children but yoga as well and I um yeah and I love it I'm just so happy and it's just I never thought um yeah I never thought this could be I could be in this place (laughs) where my job is what I love so you were in you were in finance before. So, yeah. I'm um I'm an actuary and no one ever knows what that is. And often people think I say actress and I'm like, okay, I'm going to go with that. It's <laughs> That's what cooler. I thought actually. I was like, okay, it's not actress. No, 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 no. <laughs> so um, I did like a maths degree. It's like really mathsy. And we used to, <laughs> basically we put um, a value on uncertain events. So I used to work in pensions and I used to value pension schemes. And we basically used to predict when people were going to die and like, yeah. <laughs> Like, okay yeah that was all me. right but it was good it was good I were you know I, I did like all these projects and help people sell their pension scheme and it was really it was um yeah it was cool but but it was um yeah it was different <laughs> to what I'm doing now definitely. yeah I mean totally totally did you did you I mean well while you were doing that did you see yourself ever doing like yoga and turning that into a full-time gig or no 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 yeah like no no <laughs> I, and it wasn't until it wasn't until after your second that you decided like, okay, this was my thing. Or? No, no, it was my first. It was actually my first for it when I decided. And actually now I, you know, I think one day maybe I will go back to my old job and I think I would be better at it than my yoga because you just, it gives you a kind of better perspective, doesn't it? And the things that would have stressed me out in the previously probably wouldn't stress me out anymore. Um, and I feel I could kind uh, of help. Absolutely. Other well. <laughs> absolutely. I call it like life training. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> It's it like teaches you really just how to deal with the world and how to not go crazy. I mean, I would totally go crazy if I didn't practice I know. every day. Yeah, I totally, yeah, I completely agree. Okay, so I'm waiting to hear the story about the second baby because I know it was like a thing. So what happened? So um, my first baby was quite small. So we knew Amelie was run. We, we were basically kind of not high risk from the beginning, but I was kind of more closely monitored. And everything would seem to going fine. And then at about 28 weeks, I had another scan and they were like, oh, she's a bit, she's running a bit small. We're going to have a scan in a few weeks. It's nothing to worry about. Like I'm quite small myself. So, you know, I'm, I don't, I think the woman at the time was like, you know, we'd be kind of more worried if you were growing a really big baby, whatever. But anyway, right, like two weeks right. later, going for a scan and she's still running small and they're like, oh, okay. I think maybe you need to see a consultant now. I was walked outside. I was seeing a consultant the next day and I was like, okay, I'm a little bit more scared. And then um, two weeks later, I had another scan and I wasn't allowed to leave the hospital. And basically, I, I think I, I don't, they don't know why it happens. And I do actually work with a charity now called Born that looks into premature birth because they just don't have any answers. But my placenta, whatever I grow placenta, it doesn't really work properly. And then I basically, um, yeah, they, they knew we were going to have her early. But then I woke up in the middle of the night and basically thought I was having a miscarriage, was rushed to hospital. Um, and it was, it was the most terrifying thing. Um, and it kind of stuck with me for a long time. Um, and yeah, and then I I was induced and, and when she was born, I, she was rushed to intensive care and then she had, she was sick. So she had like sepsis, her lungs didn't work. She couldn't breathe. She was on the ventilator. Like it was, it was weird because actually when you're in the moment, you're just like, right, I'm fine. I'm going to get through this. You know, you've got to think positive. It's, you know, the first week was really scary. And then it, actually after that, she got better very, very quickly and it was fine. And the the, the doctors in the, in the intensive care are really good because they t- basically take a day at a time and they don't want to scare you. And actually they didn't even mention sepsis until we left. So we didn't know. We just knew she had this infection and they were throwing antibiotics at it or whatever. Um, and yeah, and yeah it was, was probably about three months after that it kind of hit me how actually I wasn't okay. And it was, and it was pretty tough. Right. And, um, you know, I think yoga is amazing and the tools that it gives you are incredible, but sometimes, um, like, so basically I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress, um, post-traumatic stress and postnatal depression. And I think sometimes you need a little bit more. So I had therapy, which was amazing. And I think sometimes people say yoga is a cure-all and maybe you think it is. Maybe you can disagree with me. Um, I'm more than happy to. No, but, absolutely not. Yeah. I, 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 no, I think that I, th- I think it is, it is one of the tools in your belt, but I think that you need many, many, many tools. And sometimes that's, you know, whatever it is. Like, you know, I, I think there's that saying, I don't know if you've ever heard of it. They say meditate over Medicaid. And I'm like, you can't do it that. Like, you can't, it's, it's, meditation's not going to yeah. fix it. Exactly. And there's, there's chemical 
imbalances in the brain. Some people with depression can't just meditate. That's not the way it works. You know, they have, they need more additional help. I, I think it's just one of the tools that makes you, um, uh, equipped for the world. That but is anyway. so true. Like we're all unique. Everyone you can't, it's not, yeah, there's not one magic answer. For oh my God. If I didn't, if I didn't have therapy, if I didn't have therapy, I'd be a crazy person mm -hmm. in addition to yoga. You know what I mean? You know what, like, I, it's layer I on top of layer. I love how in the U S it's more of a thing. Like people, people don't even blink if you're like, yeah, I'm in therapy. Whereas in the UK, it's still quite taboo. So one of like, I'm sure we'll talk about it, but one of the reasons that me and Fanola wrote the book was because we were like, we want to shed light on these issues that people don't want to talk about. Um, because at the end of the day, like people should be talking about them. Um, you know, there are so many people that are feeling alone because they think they're the only mm -hmm. ones going through it, but in fact, they're so common. Why don't we show them? Well, and there's a lot of shit. There's a lot of shame yeah. in it as well. You know, no one wants to, I think maybe I'm, I'm speaking from my own experience, but there's a lot of, you know, well, I don't want to be seen as someone with a mental health condition, or I don't want to see seem as someone that's depressed or I don't want to, you know, be seen as someone that has anxiety or, or whatever it is. And also I know that in different cultures and maybe, you know, you can speak to this, you know, being from, from London, but there's also a taboo of like sharing too much and not being as open and not being able to, you know, talk about what's really happening inside. A lot of people kind of just like to gloss it's over really it. It's really hard, isn't it? It is really hard. And that's it. You've hit the nail on the head. It's exactly what it is. And like, you don't want to, you don't want to be the mum who seems like they're not coping. And you, you know, you look around everywhere and everyone seems like they've got it together and you see on social media and you're like, oh, and you know, there are more people speaking out now and making like big names as well. Like you were saying, like, you know, I've had personal depression, I've really struggled and da, 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 which is great. Um, but yeah, it's the, you do, it's, it, it does feel shameful and you just think, well, I should be able to cope. Why can't I? But you know, life's bloody right. hard, isn't it? <laughs> Yeah, his, <laughs> nah, it's easy. What are you talking about? <laughs> you didn't get the no, manual? I did. <laughs> how, how, how to yeah, deal. Yeah. <laughs> so you, 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 I mean, one kudos for a, a, like, you know, being able to call out that you needed some, some extra additional tools and, and some help to, to deal with everything. And, and two, like, that's a lot. That, of course, that's a lot. That's really traumatic, you know, like not knowing whether your child is going to live or not and having to go through all of that for, it sounds like it wasn't a short amount of time. It was quite a while. Um, even in a moment, you know, it's, it's, it's a lot to take in. Yeah, it was. And, so, and this inspired, this inspired you to, to, to write a book. So then, actually, huh? no, this was it. So the book actually came before then. So when I, after I had my son, I jumped back into, oh, okay. originally right. it was kind of more, much more a kind of exercise book, still yoga based, but after I had my daughter, it was much more, um, more of the meditation and mindfulness side came in. But after I had my son, I jumped mm. back into exercise too quickly and I got injured. And I just thought, do you know what? I don't actually understand the postpartum body, what we should be doing. The information out there is there's quite a lot, but it's all confusing or conflicting and it's scary. So I basically teamed up with an amazing physiotherapist um, called Fanola Burrell and we um, came up with this plan and it's like, um, so our book's called Strength Through Yoga and it's, it's not only kind of a 16 week plan that's obviously written by Fanola as well, he's a physio, but we've had it signed off by a doctor, a midwife, um, a women's health physio. So we kind of, the, the main thing is we wanted it to be safe and effective. So the point is to get your strength right. back. So not only do you have like these kind of um, initial strength building things, it's like from day one postpartum as well, which is, is kind of unusual. It's not really anything out there like it. But you've got these like yoga building, strength building circuits, which I use. That's like my practice. Like if I don't have much time, like half an hour, you know, do it all the baby naps. But then also we kind of we've got the mindfulness and the breathing and how to deal with being a mum. Like, you know, the reality is like how to how to reduce stress and yeah, that kind of side of it. But also we talk about, look, there are all these issues, like people don't want to talk about them, postnatal depression, but like diast um, diastasis recti, when your tummy muscles split and people get these things called the like mom oh, yeah. tum, and I yeah, hate yeah. that word, but you know, everyone's really worried about it, but it's not scary if you just tell people what it is and what they need to do. Um, and then prolapse and people have incontinence and it's so common that people don't want to talk about it. And so we, we basically shed light on all these issues that are really hard to talk about. And also we have this, a couple of pages, which are quite fun on myth busters because people like to say like silly <laughs> things post birth that we're like, actually, do you know what? That's not true. So, yeah. Right, right, right. Yeah. There's a lot of misinformation in general I know, out there I, exactly. <laughs> with everything. And it's just, it's just bringing everything in one place and making it easy easy to understand and easy to follow.
Well, it's on the internet, Hannah. It's got to yeah. be real. <laughs> <laughs> oh God. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, obviously, you know, your, your, your motherhood has had a, a big effect in your life. I mean, yeah, it changes your life. You become a mom, but how has that then changed your practice and your teaching how does that affect hannah as a yoga teacher i suppose i don't know if it's motherhood particularly but maybe it is maybe i don't know if it's motherhood that's made maybe it's just me growing as a person but um you know i went thinking okay i want to do these incredible postures that i see and i want to recreate all these moves and stuff like that but you know what over the past couple of years it's it's just not been that for me and actually you know why would I want to bend myself in that way if I'm not safe I much prefer to do things that are more you know to be a bit safer in my body and to mm -hmm. yeah yeah does that make sense like yeah do you do you do you find that it in, that it inspires or changes like your teachings or, or like and I'm not talking about just like the physical but like you know the, the words that come out of your mouth in class do you think it that affects the lessons that you give Absolutely. to your students yeah yeah it all comes from what I've learned and you know um I just I suppose I want people to understand their bodies a bit more as they move which is a bit different it's a bit of a different angle from a yoga teacher like a normal yoga teacher but I um I want people to understand what they're doing and actually why if they're doing this pose that they might feel this way and actually that means that maybe this muscle's a bit weak or they need to strengthen that more or whatever which is a, it's a bit of a funny angle at coming in it but I, I just I suppose I just like to help people understand their bodies a bit more and and do things to help because loads of people have like chronic pain now and like constantly suffering from low back pain and stuff like that and you know yoga does help but sometimes you need to kind of understand the root of your issue and maybe you've got low back pain because you've got a weak core if you got weak glute mead or whatever it is do you know what i mean yeah absolutely absolutely yeah it's it's i mean it's it's a different understanding mm -hmm. on the human body absolutely i i uh i have uh and you know you might you might know janet stone here but you know she has i mean one she has a great way of teaching to the body but two like her wisdom that comes in class you can definitely tell that she's a mom in such a beautiful way she weaves in these beautiful themes and you know, she'll often talk about her daughters and it's just really cool to see how that different aspect of her life has really affected her, her yoga teachings. You know, it, it it's kind of nice and cool to see that it's, 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 you learn lessons in life by being a mom and that then translates into helping oh, others that's so out, nice. I don't know? know her. I'm definitely will look her up, but it is too. Like sometimes I weave in the theme, like the innocence of childhood, like just watching like my son go out into the rain for the first time, like with an umbrella and how amazing he found that. And actually, do you know, it's sometimes we get so clouded and we're walking wherever we need to go and we're not actually looking around us. And it is like mindfulness isn't mm -hmm. just like, you know, doing a mindfulness practice for 20 minutes. It's actually appreciating your morning shower or brushing your teeth or the walk to work or whatever it is. Um, yeah, it's, it's, yeah. Watch children. It's really interesting. Do you think it's softened you up mm. as a teacher in um, a good probably, way? Yeah, probably has given me a little bit more empathy as well. Have you noticed any shifts and changes in your teaching because um, of it? Yeah, I, I suppose the biggest shift is just the now, um, now I've educated myself to understand the body a bit more. That's the biggest shift that I'm helping people now um, understand their bodies and um, know what to do um, for their, you know, for their, for their bodies. That's probably my biggest shift. Um, do you, do you think that you want to continue with, because I know you've, you've obviously you've done a lot of education on, on working with moms after you know, pregnancy, are you going to continue to work with that type of demographic or do you think you're just going to keep it open for everybody? Like, do you see yourself like moving into uh, the role of supporting more mothers or, you know, more mothers after uh, they're, while they're pregnant or, or after pregnancy? Or do you just feel like you're going to just have like an overall? I think I, I kind of want to keep the overall just because I think it, like really getting yourself into a niche is a good thing. But, you know, when sometimes you just get too focused, you kind of miss some bits. And actually, if you if you look at the whole as well, you can use that. But um, I, I do want to kind of keep the focus on mothers and our next, you know, we're already planning our next book on pregnancy and because people kind of want a bit of help on pregnancy. <laughs> like no, and it's, it's a hard one because no one really likes to, it's, it's a bit scary because obviously people are growing humans in their bodies and you know there's a bit of risk yeah. there but at the same time you know I'm sure we can we can help people and you know all of our book at the moment is research-based so it would carry on being research-based and I think I think a lot of it too what people forget like 
during pregnancy and even afterwards, a lot of the focus is on the baby. And I think the mom gets oh, forgotten. Oh, God, do you know what? That's so, it's so true. I think it's taken me like over a year to realize that uh, how important self care is. Um, and actually, that's even more like <laughs> three and a half years since having my boy. Um, cause you just feel guilty. Like when you're not with your child, you just feel really guilty. You think, Oh God, well, I should be with them all the time. I want to be with them all the time. And I shouldn't, you know, go and get my nails done or go and get my head on. Um, I definitely felt like that. And I'm now understanding actually, it's so important to look after yourself first, because if you're not looking after yourself, then you can't do the best job looking after your children and your family. Yeah. I mean, at that point, you'll just be pouring from an empty cup, but also there's, I know like just your mental health in order to go back and really be, you know, fully present. I can only imagine. I'm, not, you know, I'm definitely not a mother, <laughs> and I don't have it, and I don't have any kids. But I can only imagine. You know, like you're if 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 there is this continuous pattern of like you know all the attention going to the baby, which isn't. I'm not saying that that's a bad thing, but you know, like it's also nice to check in with the mom and see how they're doing and see how they're feeling after the birth and you know after going through nine months or whatever it was of pregnancy or going through something super traumatic like you went through, like. There needs to be that conversation. There needs to be that touch point to check in to the, to the woman, you know, to honor to honor the goddess that just went through oh God, that's all the such things. A, that's such a beautiful way of putting it, and especially from the fact that you're a guy, it's it's so true because you have this baby. Everyone comes to visit it, and no one asks how you're doing. And you know, we go through a lot, and you know, everyone goes through a lot. But some people go through some awful stuff, and then they don't. They're so scared, and they don't want to talk about it, and they're so ashamed, and. I've had this like, oh God, I had this awful story where um, there's a friend of mine on Instagram. She's called um, Sarah Ruse Yoga. And she's, I love her because she's really um, forthcoming and talking about the fact she had a prolapse with her second child. And she went to go and speak to her GP after six weeks and basically say, look, something's not right. I'm in a lot of pain. And he said like, oh, well, what do you expect? It's going to be a car crash down there. You've had a baby. And that is horrific. It makes me so angry that that is so that's a gp and yeah. that's their attitude so i yeah i love sarah for what she's doing she's doing an amazing job and you're right we need to we need to look after the mum and and we need to be stronger as mums to kind of tell people what we need and you know i mean uh, yeah i it's like a little backstory i was raised pretty primarily by women and you know my my entire team is all women and i'm i'm all about women empowerment just because i think that they that there is a lot of forgotten about the women, like they're, they're, there's just, they get forgotten a lot and they don't get, I don't know. Well, we can go into it. That's a whole nother <laughs> podcast, <laughs> but I, I am a big believer in it, you know? And I think that you you literally grew a human, okay. like put, put that into person. Everyone pause and think about that for a second. You grew a baby in your yeah, belly. Yeah. It's, it's, it's <laughs> really, it's an, like, it's insane, isn't it? It's insane. It's, it, it's absolutely bonkers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> It's funny though, because you, you're pregnant the first time and it's just you and you're like, your partner's like, oh yeah, oh my God, this is amazing. Like, what do you want? I'll rub your feet. I'll run out and go and get you prawn crackers at one in the morning or whatever it is. And then you have a second one and you're like, right. he's like, oh, you've done this before. It's fine. You're just growing a human. <laughs> you don't get any of that. There's no prawn crackers or anything. Um, I hate to think what happens when you have a third and a fourth. But anyway, yeah. That's so yeah, funny. Yeah. <laughs> you're on your own. <laughs> you exactly. you got Uber Eats, right? Exactly. But that's... Sorry. And I got one one last Go question for you. What is the biggest thing motherhood has taught you? Ooh, that's a big one. Um, for me, motherhood taught me the power of your breath and how you can use your breath to give you strength. And um, whether that's through taking three deep breaths when you're about to lose your cool or give yourself a three minute timeout or have moving mindfully with your breath. But, you know, your breath is your life force. Um, and it's so, it's so powerful it anchors you to the present and it, it just, you know, I, yeah, I'm not the most patient person. Sometimes I wish I was. And this morning I got, <laughs> my kids were like at it from like five o'clock in the morning because they're still jet lagged. And, um, you know, just taking a step back and just having three deep breaths and actually collecting myself and, and kind of having some, understanding of what they're going through and the fact they're jet lagged. I think that's really, really strong. Um, so yeah, I think it's taught me how strong the breath is. Is that, <laughs> I kind of cheated the answer. Is that okay? No, it's not a cheating answer at all. I mean, it's your prana. It literally is your life force. Exactly. It's your life force. Yeah. 
It's your I cannot wait to meet you in London. I know. It's going to be so fun. <laughs> I'm really excited as well. Same. I can't wait. I, I, I can't wait to give you a big old squeeze. And, and now I get to meet your kids too. I know. Yeah. And I, I want to hear this backstory about being brought up by women. That sounds amazing. Yeah. It was my, my, my sister, man. She's, she, yeah, she's, she's a powerhouse and she was definitely the one that kept me in line and kept me going. So. Oh, wow. That's lovely. Yeah. Yeah. Hannah, thank you so much for coming on the show today, man. I, 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 uh, I, I feel like I now have a really good friend across the pond. I love saying that. <laughs> um, oh, no, but thank no, you I'm, so much for having me. Thank you. Uh, of course. Of course. And I, I can't wait to give you a big squeeze and, and hug and, and teach with you um, in just a few short months. It's got to be so quick and around the corner. I know. Let's hope the sun's shining, eh? And for the next part of the show, we're going to share and feature some stories that shed some light on how yoga really has some transformative effects and its ability to heal others. So hello, everybody. My name is Ithia Liniers. I am 38 years old and living in Sierra Leone in West Africa. I'm currently a yoga teacher and I also work with an amazing local NGO with street children. But my background is the highest corporate world level. I will read you my story as it was published in Fierce and Calm, an Instagram page. Obviously, it is a very short note resuming all my life, all the things I went through. So if you want to know more or just think I could help or support you anyhow, just feel free to contact me. Here I go with my story. Uh, sexually abused as a child and a life of chronic pain. But yoga has taught me resilience, acceptance and has kept me going. When I was 27 years old, I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, an incurable neurological illness. Doctors don't know the origin of the illness, but after some personal research, I have a feeling where it came from. When I was around 7 years old, I was sexually abused by one of my father's employees. It lasted for around a year. I don't remember how many times, but definitely more than once and more than twice. My adolescence was very challenging due to a number of traumatic experiences that affected me deeply and my relation to others. By the time I was able to support myself, I ran away. Eight hours flight from home trying to bury the past and devoted myself to enjoying as much as I could. I was traveling, I had a high performing job, friends, lovers, nights out, alcohol, poor diet. I was squeezing every drop of, from my life. I was completely disconnected though from my body and mind and, when, and I was living la vida loca when the illness showed up. Every day my body was hurting so much and my mind foggy because this illness doesn't allow you to rest. My digestive system was messed up. The pain was so bad I couldn't stand it. All my muscles, my joints, even my skin were hypersensitive. I couldn't stand clothes touching my skin. Even the weight of my hair was unbearable. I wanted to disappear. So many times I really thought about ending it all. But I discovered yoga and although it didn't heal me, at first it helped me deal with the physical symptoms of the illness and little by little it helped build up the mental strength to be able to accept my situation. I learned how to live with permanent pain all over my body. The more I accept, the more I can tolerate. Waking up from bed every morning and standing out on my mat, even if for a few sun salutations, is what keeps me going. Yoga is my tool to deal with the pain. It helps me visualize that I am much more than my illness. The tool that helps me be strong for my kids and the tool that shows me the path when I have to slow down and rest for my body to keep functioning. Thank you so much for your time. I fully expected to be dead before I saw 30. 
I mean, when I when I turned 27 and decided that I wanted to live, I hadn't seen a sober day in about 12 years. I always I always felt like something was missing, and I spent a lot of years using drugs and alcohol to avoid having to feel that way. It often felt like the chemicals were actually um, working. You know, they seemed to fill that spiritual void. In reality, they were only making shit worse. Uh, many of us addicts, alcoholics, we chase that solution right t- to the edge of the abyss, and some of us don't ever find our way back. I, I nearly didn't. During my stay in rehab, I spent most of my free time alone in the woods. And I was walking in the woods one day when it hit me, um, really out of nowhere. I sat down in the dirt and the pine needles and this feeling washed over me that everything was going to be okay. For the first time in my adult life, I felt hope. Um, I felt more than hope. I felt this deep abiding sense of wholeness, just the opposite of the emptiness that I'd always felt. Um, And you know that, that feeling of wholeness, it was fleeting. A few months out of rehab, and I was struggling. I was sober, but I was broken. I was lost, I was scared. My uh, friend brought me to my first yoga class and I got another taste of that wholeness, that sense that I had everything that I needed, that I was exactly where I was supposed to be, doing exactly what I was supposed to be doing. And for the next year, my yoga mat was basically my life raft. Over the following nine years, it remained um, along with the 12-step program that also saved my life, the foundation of my spiritual practice. I came to my mat badly broken by all the years that I spent seeking outside myself for some way to fill that void. Many of us do. Many of us show up broken. And as we settle into our practice, we discover that we've just been going about it all wrong. What we've been seeking has been inside us. It's been inside each of us all along. Yoga teaches us how to look, man. Yoga taught me how to look inside and begin to heal. It taught me how to find peace. It taught me how to become whole. And that's that's something worth sharing. And I am excited to be on this journey and I'm excited to have the opportunity to to share that piece and to teach yoga um, and to help other people connect to that sense of of wholeness.